Hi, I'm Ray Porter. Uh, I get to narrate this guy's uh, work, which is a real privilege. This is Peter Klein's. Well, now I don't have anything to say. No, because <laughs> I say your words, remember? Oh, okay. Anyway. I'll be quiet for the rest of this. Yes. <laughs> I've been meaning to ask you, because we've worked together now for, what, seven years, right? Well, really, let's, let's be honest. When we started, we didn't even talk at all. Not at all. That the first one was, I, I was with a very small publishing house, and 14 came out. It, it was a fluke. And I think they just, again, grabbed you off the street. They did. And said, hey, buddy, you want to... We'll narrate for Can food. you read I out loud? Out there with a sign. And yeah, no, I was, I was contacted by uh, a producer, uh, John McElroy. And he said, we have this book. We're not really even sure what it is. And I said, I like that. that. That sounds good. And I began to narrate it at my home studio. That was 14. And uh, pretty much immediately I was like, oh, this is, this is going to be fun. We didn't actually meet until sometime after that. At I think I think you had actually recorded that and The Fold. We met at the, at the Jonathan Mayberry book at, signing at, in at, Burbank. At Dark Delicacies, right. Correct. That, and, I, and I didn't even recognize you because right. all, all I knew you from visually actually yeah. was your little uh, guest spot on Lost. So <laughs> I was used to okay. seeing you with like your full mane of hair With the out. hair down, yes. And... So when you were there and you had like your glasses on and your hair back. Trying to get the illusion of being learned. Yes, and yes. civilized. And, yeah. and Jonathan was like, oh, and this is Ray. And it, it took me to like, Ray, who? Should I know this person? And then, and then it's like, oh my God. <laughs> this far into, let's talking about like the Threshold series, um, knowing that it's going to be narrated and all of that, does that have anything, does that have any say or any input as you're writing the book? Do you think about writing a little bit differently now? Do you hear certain things maybe where maybe you didn't before? Well, you figure, okay, 14 and The Fold mm -hmm. were written to be general books, but Dead Moon and, and now Terminus are both Audible exclusives. Right. So from day one, I knew this is only going to be read. People are going to be hearing you. And it did make me a lot more conscious of, like there are certain rules that I think hold very well for print. Mm -hmm. But then once we get into hearing spoken things like like one thing uh, I tell people a lot of times when you're writing said is invisible mm -hmm. that if you have said on the page no one's going to notice it no one's going to register That's that right. you said it a dozen times but once you're reading it and it becomes Bob said Harry said it's Doug like said, cowbell yes ding, ding, that it's just ding, again yeah. again and again so it's made yeah. me very aware of like how often do I need to actually address and then on top of that it has also made me much more conscious of things where I can write a character, for example, mm. and okay, I will know you'll put an accent on this person. You'll make them distinct somehow. Mm -hmm. But then I become much more self-conscious of, well, wait, am I just sort of leaning on Ray to do all the heavy lifting here that now I don't have to do it because Ray will make the character I'm happy to do it. <laughs> What's so great about narrating your work is, and like our friend Jonathan Mayberry, and, mm -hmm. and we, we have a lot of friends in common, Scott Sigler and, yep. and Dennis, and I've been fortunate enough to be able to narrate their books as well. Uh, and the thing I find so pleasurable about narrating uh, your books is that it's, it speaks well, if that makes any sense. It's, um, as an actor, it is simpler for me to, 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 to get it across, to, to get the characters across, the conversations that take place between. Not everybody can write dialogue. Um, and after narrating audiobooks for many years now, I realized it's truly a formidable gift to be able to write just two people speaking. Uh, you're, you do that incredibly well. Uh, I'm always very happy when I get to do one of your books because I know that I can get out of the way of the text, you know, and, and literally just deliver the mail, as it were. I also really appreciate, and this sounds arcane and weird, and you may want to cut this out later, but <laughs> I really appreciate um, your, your lack of uh, uh, overuse of adverbs in screenwriting, they call them the Rileys. Yes. That you'll have like the slug line, David, abruptly, yes, John, exactly. hurriedly, you know. Yeah. And there's a point where you just have, you have to get out of the way. And like, right. like look, the actor's gonna get this. They right. will understand that, they'll understand that. And they'll, they'll, they will carry that amount of weight. Yeah. That, you know, I don't have to put exclamation points after this, I don't have to do that. Because they'll figure out, this is urgent, this is loud, there's enough other stuff in there it's a it's a very interesting thing it, 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 noticing the way in which certain text lends itself well to being spoken and uh little minor differences 
and it's really better to read it than it is to hear it, you know, and so it's yeah. very funny. I always wondered that, though, and it's not a, not a question I ever asked you, was that after the advent of, of 14 and some of these other things being done in audio, you know, how does that affect your writing? So it's really good to hear that. I have to say, uh, you know, having been there for 14, having been there for The Fold, having been there for Dead Moon, all of which are marvelously creepy and really fun and all of that in their own right, this one, the, the Audible exclusive Terminus, this is turning it up to 11. Thank you. It's really fun. We're having a great time narrating it. It is, it is one of the books where, I mean, obviously, any time I think you write a book, mm -hmm. any time I write a book, there are points when I'm like, okay, and people are going to go nuts when they hear this. Nuts. And it struck me as I was going through this, like, okay, doing one of the last things before they send it to you, yeah. like my last pass on it, like, oh, this is going to be a great moment where he does this. Like, oh, this is going to be a great moment. Okay, this is going to be great. What is so fun about this and, book in particular, too, is there's Easter eggs. There's really fun things. Yes. For people who've been following the story, there's going to be some great surprises. Yes. But also for people who have never encountered this before, just as a standalone, I think it's going to make them want to go back and read the Which I hope. Which is my goal. I you think know. if, you know, it's why I always call it a, an unconnected series. Yeah. Because you should just be able to pick up any one of them and enjoy it. I have a series series. But I never wanted these, the Threshold books, to be something where, and if you haven't read the past six books, right. none of this makes sense. I, I like to think of it as a series connected by all these. We don't need a Captain Midnight Dakota ring. Exactly. Yeah. That you can just go along, and if you, if you know who that character is, if you get that reference, if you get that yeah. mention, then, oh, then this is this, and that is that. And that means that they're them, and she's that. And that's, you know... How do you do that? It's, you know? it's, it is tricky because one of the... I'm a big believer as a writer that you should never assume, oh, and I'm going to get like a 20 book series off this. Right. That can be an epic. So really, like like we were saying before, 14 was a complete fluke. You know, I didn't even think 14 was going to take off. And, you know, yeah. I just figured it would be like a book I wrote between the zombie series I was writing. <laughs> so I, I did it and it became this big hit. And then later on, I was working on The Fold. Mm -hmm. And a very, very, actually The Fold, weird as it sounds, I actually started in college. It, really? It was a college novel called Mouth, uh, based oh, off the, yeah. the gateways. Okay. And it had a lot of the same character or different versions of the same mm -hmm. characters. We had the super, the guy with the memory. We had yeah. the creator. We had, But they were all very different characters. And I came back to it as something I would like to revisit this and realized, you know, this would actually make a neat little sort of tie-in quasi sequel to 14. Oh, interesting. And so I junked most of the original novel and just sort of started from square one and sort of, okay, so if I was going to say this was happening in that world, right? then with the rules I set up in 14, what would be happening now here? And that reshaped, rearranged a lot of how the fold went. Originally when 14 came out, because it was a small press, they were very limited what they could do for publishing, for okay. actually creating a volume. And they basically told me, yeah, you've got to cut like 50,000 words out of it or something. So I spent like three weeks just chopping this, chopping this, chopping this. And one of the characters, who's a minor character in 14, Anne, is in... The, oh! You just picked up on this. <laughs> is also in the fold. She is the receptionist. Yeah. And she is, yeah. she is basically the major character. Sorry, I'm fangirling right now. <laughs> oh my God, really? Yeah. This is the same character. She are, we like, gonna see, are we going to see, are we going to can you bring back those edited, I mean, will there be a release the Kleins well, cut well, movement? No, hope not. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, actually, what's funny is there was a great speech that I really loved that I had to cut. Okay. In 14, and I can't really explain it without mm. giving stuff away, but I tried to transplant that into the fold. And then it, okay. it was so awkward, and I realized I, like, tweaked so many things in the fold to give me an excuse to use the speech there. So I was like, no, that's not, it's not going to be in that either. And I had to cut that whole thing and redo the ending. Um, but it fits beautifully in Terminus with different characters. It's like you have to keep track of various timelines. Oh, yeah. It's, which is oddly reflected, I think, in some aspects of these books, too, you know, of keeping track of various threads of... It's fascinating. It's... I don't know. I, I like doing it. It's mm -hmm. one of those things. I try not to get too crazy about it because I never want to be one of those guys like, well, you know, on page 17 of book two, you said... Right. But at the same time, I, I like that sort of stuff. As a, as a reader, 
I enjoy it. And, and a listener, I think mm -hmm. it's cool when you can get the, the those little details that you, you can look back and go, wait a minute, then that yes. there means this. Well, I and mean, then, like the penny just dropped for me with the, yeah. with the Anne speech, you know. So now you're like going to have to go back and re-record a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I got to sit down and just <laughs> everything now. That's that's one interesting aspect of it is that you know when I'm when I am uh, given the opportunity to to narrate a book, it's not that I know a vast amount and and there really isn't that much opportunity. I mean, obviously we'll talk over pronunciation things and mm -hmm. that sort of thing, but I don't get the opportunity to sit down with an author and go, okay, tell me about all of this. And I don't know that I necessarily would want to. I don't like to hammer everything down because I do believe that for me. Not for other narrators, but for me, it tends to make things a little um, stale or having been done once before. I like being affected by stuff as the listener is. Mm -hmm. It makes me sort of the uber fan of, of the author that I'm narrating at that time, and I'm a massive fan of your work just on its own. I also get to narrate it, which is great. But as a fan, I look at all of these stories and I think there's almost a hint that there's there's a whole lot going on that I don't know anything about and I want to find out about it. You know, and I get to narrate the work. You know, it doesn't make me an authority at all, it just makes me kind of the biggest fan of what's being written. So it's fascinating for me to hear your process with that and Sweet. to have moments like, you know, the 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 Anne revelation. I want those other pages in 14 now. Was there a chance it might mess up some things in the it fold actually, and it or actually, terms? It actually would if if, okay. if, if it if we just sort of toss it all back. Right. Like I said, definitely there's a whole section that is now that I've been like, you know, kept in a little file for the past seven years. Finally, yeah. I get to use this and I'm putting this in Terminus. Interesting. Um, and I actually like it. I honestly, it's one of those weird things where I think it's actually a much more powerful speech now in okay. Terminus that it was like a neat thing in 14. I liked it. I thought it was cool. But now this is like major you know, that's revelation great. in that's this, great. that, you know, when suddenly getting a, a new view on things through this. So let me, let me toss something back at you okay. with, with actually a little, I don't know, introduction. One of the things when I first got to listen to 14, yeah. um, and this is going to sound really weird, in my head, the character of uh, Veek, who's yes. in 14 and appears very briefly at the end of the fold, um, I never thought of her as a, a character with an accent. Right. And at first I was like, oh my God, they're doing this totally wrong. And then I immediately realized, like, but of course, within an audio book, this is a much easier way to keep track of people sure. and all that. So she has an accent. Cool. Do you like doing that stuff? I mean, what do you, obviously I, I, I give you lots to work with. Do you yes. like? Yes. You give me a lot to work with and it's not so pigeonholed that, you know, I can't get a little bit creative or take my interpretation of it. And it's very gratifying to surprise you, maybe mm -hmm. with well, obviously if it goes well, it's gratifying. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, I don't think I've ever been get not an surprised. angry letter. <laughs> um, what the hell? Ray? What was this? <laughs> Something about that character, Veek. I mean, I I didn't go, oh, she's this ethnicity, so has this accent. It wasn't on the nose like that. There's something about the strength in her character. There's something about the words she uses and the way she phrases her responses and all of that, that it just kind of naturally fell out of my mouth that way. The way Nate speaks, the way some of these other characters speak. Well, um, I, know, well I know one we've talked about in Paradox Bound that yeah. you got to do 15. 15. And, well, 15 and in Paradox Bound was a challenge. Uh, thanks, by the way. I never got to <laughs> look you in the eye and say, thanks for giving me a character with no face <laughs> but lines. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> that was a tough one, you know, because I couldn't, I couldn't, no way to look like you. <laughs> you know, that's, that's lame. So what do you do? How do you make a person speak that has no mouth, you know? Eventually, I keyed it more into, he works for the government. He's a government worker. And you know those faceless sort of interactions you have with Which, like the post office or whatever. We're terribly sorry and we really hope that you know that they don't mean it and they're just <laughs> not even there. But they're saying these words and there's no actual connection to reality to it. There was something in that that really informed 15, the, the character in Paradox Which, which was a beautiful read because that is actually the, the whole idea is <clears throat> they are the faceless they're men the behind faceless the government. Men. 
So. so that there's no real, I mean, so you could have this horrific, frightening character appear and be like, and what I eventually settled on was like m tweaking my face over, you know, Mr. Teague, I'm very happy to hear you. And I loved the way that you wrote those lines because there would be the most horrific, frightening stuff going on. And what was coming out of 15's <laughs> lack of a mouth <laughs> it, it, it was very sort of almost as if it was a script provided by the government for him to say in these mm -hmm. moments. This artificiality, uh, lack of um, awareness of what was actually going on, tone deafness yeah. uh, was so great. As a, and it was great as a character choice. Well, you, you were talking about Paradox Bound. Yes. And obviously I know one of the fun bits for you was that I talk of Easter eggs? Yeah. I got to drop. Obviously, I got to drop one <laughs> yeah. for you. Yeah. Because first, I, I was shamelessly using you to get me to a, a car show, and, and it was I was happy to bring you. And, and, was, and then yeah. Be, and like, okay, so where are the classic cars? Where's this? Yeah. Where's this? Um, well, it was. I remember you contacted me about coming to. I have I have an uh, an old car, and I. Go but to car you can't shows. tell it's old because it's beautiful. No, because it's shiny. It's so beautiful. Um, <laughs> but I take it to I take it to car shows, and there's a lot of them here in Southern California. And you had asked to come along with me to the car show at Bob's Big Boy yep. in Burbank on a Friday night. You know, we got there, and you just kind of you sort of vanished. I remember. You know, we talked a little bit, and I sort of showed you around, and then you were gone. You know, out just doing things, and I really didn't think anything of it. And then this book, Paradox Bound, comes up. I'm fortunate enough to be asked to narrate it, mm -hmm. and it's full of these old cars. I was like, I see what that was. I know what that was. Um, and then you put my car in your book, yeah. and I screamed out loud when I got to that point. <laughs> I'm so we, proud. With a special driver. With a very <laughs> special driver who's also an Indiana boy, yeah. so I really like that. Which was also one of the things that I realized after the fact that was, I'm, I'm very bad, I know, because I will... I will drop in things where this is never actually named or explained in the book, but like, hmm. but ugh, Ray should probably know this. And unfortunately, I tend to think of that really after the fact. So when you got in touch with me, <laughs> and like, it's suddenly, like, oh yeah, but like the voice should probably still be right. <laughs> and so when you got in touch, and I was like, see, so you picked up on the fact that the yeah. character, and you immediately were like, oh yeah. We've never spent a whole lot of time before books like, hey, Da, 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 this you'll you'll drop a couple of lines to me. I'll, I'll maybe say, "Hey, is it is this the person I think this is who's yeah. showing up in this book?" When I'm doing or, weird cameos, yeah, yeah, or yeah, something. yeah, yeah, or yeah. or just timeline crosses and things yeah. like that. But there's not a lot. I mean, I, it's weird. I feel sort of like I'm I've been lucky, and I roll the dice every time. That like, gosh, am I going to really make him mad with this read? You know, and I haven't yet, or have I? I wouldn't admit it on film. Wow. When I was writing uh, Terminus, yeah, and thinking about to some, this is probably one of the books. This and Dead Moon, mm -hmm. again, Audible exclusives that I was most thinking of. Okay, Ray is going to get this and need this. And one of the things I realized about halfway through this is, holy crap, have I boned you? Because there are so many characters <laughs> from so many countries <laughs> yes. in this that that we have Americans, we have Kenyans, we have Somalians. We have Serbians. We have, uh, I think there's Tanzania. There's a Tanz yeah. I mean, just. Um, I, who else? I mean, we basically have like a whole crew on this big it international. It is the UN. Yes. Yeah, and and it's a large cast. I mean, yes, I'm, it is. I think usually I write kind of intimate books that I I don't like having more than like three or four characters that we're really following around. No, you're right. Like you're there'll right. be a lot in there. But this is weird because there's. Teams of different people. Yes. So there'll be this and, group of people. And, and this, so there's you know, this group yeah, of three or four yeah. people and this group of three or four people yes. and this group of people. Yeah. And um, so how horrific was that? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but, but seriously, it's, it's always amazed me that you can, especially like we said, that you, you get down this rhythm of, of being able to fall into the different voices. And make, and it it well, sounds the, very natural. It, 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 I learned a long time ago as an actor, when, you, when you're doing, let's say, a situation where you're, playing someone with an accent. Mm -hmm. If you're just doing the accent, the scene will be about a person with an accent and you won't ever understand what is going on in the scene or whatever. I think that over time I've learned where to apply just enough of uh, inflection or, or dialect or whatever to inform where the person's from 
without making it this giant, huge, neon lit accent because I Flavoring don't want to lose character. Yeah. Um, when someone speaks in the book, uh, their face shows up. I see their face in my head. So when I'm doing the book and moments of dialogue come up, I can see everybody's face. And when I look at their face, there's only one way they can sound. I could go to a sketch artist and tell you what Veek looks like. Never mind how you've described her, her face in my head for her voice. Right. Um, I've also learned as a narrator that uh, oftentimes it's less about is the voice high or low or, or you know, da 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 It's more about muscle placement so that I can speak in exactly the same way that I'm speaking right now and just move my voice a little bit and change my tongue. And suddenly I'm a completely different person. I haven't changed anything in the way that I have not changed the timbre or anything like that. I've just changed musculature. So you do just little things like that and let the audience fill in the blanks. Yes. Do you know? Um, and so for me, it's not that difficult necessarily keeping them straight. Um, I know what all these people look like in this book, you know. Um, Terminus is, I'm loving it. This is one of those things where I come to the studio every day like, what's going to happen? You know, it's very, very exciting. It's a great book. I think it's a terrific addition to the Threshold series, it's, it's to always, this world. It's always fun to hear that from you because you're usually... I, I don't show my stuff to a lot of people. Mm. So honestly, like, usually you're reading it before, like, even double digits of people have oh, seen it. Oh, I know. It. I love so, it. Like, yeah, I think, like, you're probably pr literally person, like, number eight or nine who's Feels like read that it. lanyard at the rock concert. <laughs> All access. Uh -huh. All right. Let me get, let me get, let yep. me <laughs> um, So you are, like, one of the people I like getting the feedback and hearing that, mm. okay, it's pressing right. Ray's liking it, so... I am liking it. It's great. It's going to be, I, I really do think that fans uh, of the other books are going to be extremely pleased and people who've never encountered any of your stuff until this book are going to be thrilled. It's great. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed.